Well, amen. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion this uh, Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? If God's been good to you. Well, amen, amen. How about you do this before we get started? Can you find someone and just wave to them and welcome them to the house of God this morning? Just give them a smile. One, give them a smile. Don't frown around. Give them a smile and welcome them to the house of God on a Sunday morning. Well, amen. Well, how many are happy to be in the house of God? I believe that God has a very special blessing for all of you today. Because it was no easy day to wake up. How many of you thank God for the 68, 67 degree weather that we had this yes, week? Yes, yes. It's a little bit harder to thank God for the weather we have this, <laughs> this day, but we, we thank God for another day. Yes, yes. We may have lost a little bit of an hour, I believe, you know, asleep, but I see smiles on everyone's faces. I believe that God has a blessing for you today. We know that God honors those who honor him. I believe that he has a word for you on this day. I want to ask you a question as we prepare this morning. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? There's a scripture that I love in Ecclesiastes that says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. What are you holding on to? What do you hold on to in life when things get difficult? What do you hold on to in life? What do you hold on to in life when things get challenging? When sickness hits, when problems come to the family, what do you hold on to in your life when you get confused? What do you hold on to when things aren't necessarily clear? What do you hold on to when things at the job are acting funny? When your funny when your money's acting funny, what do you hold on to? When all goes wrong, when it's cold outside, what do you hold on to? But there's a song we used to sing that said, hold to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. 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 So I want to encourage you, when you go through difficulty, when you have confusion in life, when you're dealing with sickness, when you're dealing with some health issues, with some money issues, whatever it may be that you may be coming here to that you're de dealing with right now, I want to encourage you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because God is a great God. Do I have a witness here today that God is a great God? You are surrounded by witnesses and testimonies of people that went through difficult times, but they held on to God's unchanging hand. And you may be going through something difficult right now. You may have to look back and say, hey, if God did it before, he can do it again. So I want to encourage you today to hold to God's unchanging hand. You may feel disappointment. You may feel difficulty. You may feel challenge in your life. But the thing I love about coming into the house of God is when I come into this place, I feel God is moving. I feel God is working. I feel God is sending a miracle. I feel that God is speaking something over to me. So that's my prayer for you today. That today as you come into the house of God, that you start to feel that God is moving into that area that you need him to move in. And that miracles, blessings, and great things are on the way. How many of you received that word today? Well, amen. Will the praises go up? Come on, praise team. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team leads us. Come on, put your hands together. My God is big, so strong.
strong, so strong, so mighty, so mighty. My, God my God, plans for me, plans for me. Goes, beyond goes beyond my wildest dreams. Said my today. Oh, why don't you stand on your feet? Jesus promised that he'll take care of me. How many know that he'll take care of you? Just say amen. Amen. Jesus promised that he will take care of you. Do me a favor and just bow your heads for a moment and focus on the goodness of God. 
Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Our God is a mighty God, and he promised that he'll take care of you. He promised that he'll never leave you nor forsake you today. Focus on the goodness of God. Focus on the promises of God as even the choir sung today because Jesus promised, and I'm going to keep saying it, that he will take care of you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the circumstances are, Jesus promised he'll take care of you even on today. I want to let you know that you can come right now to the altar. It's prayer time here in God's house. Just come to the altar right now. and It is for you that we are praying even today. Today is a moment for you to go to God together and just pray to God. We can also focus on the mightiness of God and how he's so awesome and how he's so, so, so powerful because we believe that we serve what we call a mighty God. Somebody say a mighty God. So as we pray to God, can you play that song, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. That's a good song. It talks about how he's so mighty and so powerful. So whatever it is that you come in the need of, whatever it is that is maybe bearing you down or has been heavy on this week, turn it over to the Lord. Bow your heads right now and just talk to God in your own special way. Just talk to God right now. We serve a mighty God. We serve a marvelous God. We serve a Savior that is, that is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a matchless. We can't match his power. We can't, we can't match what he can do. But, but he can do what no other power on earth can do. So as we praise and worship his name today, we need to focus on the power of God. When, when the world can, we know that God can. When the doctor can, we know that God can. When, when, when you're on your job and, and they can't do it, we know that God can. Turn to the left, turn to the right. People in your sphere of influence, they can't do it. But the good news is, is that God can do it for you. So as we focus on God today, we can focus that whatever we come in the need of, whatever is bothering us, whatever challenges we may have, we can turn it over to the Lord. Somebody needs to just take their hand and just throw it out there and say, I'm going to cast my cares upon him. Raise your hands right now. Raise your hands right now and just submit to God right now as we worship and as we praise him and as we sing this song. Lord, you're mighty. The choir's going to sing in a moment. Lord, you're mighty. Somebody needs to say, Lord, you're mighty. Somebody needs to say, Lord, you're mighty. Now let's talk to God as the choir sings. Lord, you're mighty. Yes. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty.
today what prayer can do prayer can strengthen your faith it helps to strengthen your resolve and your trust in God prayer can bring peace to your life it can be bring peace to your mind and bring peace to your heart and if you're anxious or if you're worried what do you do you go to God in prayer and I believe that he'll give us peace that passes all understanding He'll give us comfort when we need it. What does prayer do? The great thing about prayer is that it doesn't change your situation sometimes, but prayer will change us. Sometimes we don't need our situation changed. Sometimes we need God to just change us. Change the way we see things. Change our outlook. Change the way we're moving. And all of a sudden, God can turn the whole thing around. Because through our prayer, God can do what? Somebody say, change us. Also, prayer will do this. It will align us in the will of God. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're in the will of God, there's some things that can happen in your life. If you're in the will of God, there's some blessings that will come in your direction. So we ask God. We ask God for peace. We ask God to align us with his will. And we ask God to turn it around, even on today. So even if you're brokenhearted, even if you're going through a challenge, go to God. And I believe that he'll make it. He'll make it all right. I'm going to ask Pastor Dan is going to come. He's going to lead us in a word of prayer today as we go to God through prayer. Yes, amen. Let us pray together. Lord, you are a mighty God. You're a mighty God. We may deal with sickness in our lives, but you are a mighty God. Someone came here today, Lord, and their body was hurting in certain areas, Lord. But God, you are a mighty God, mighty to heal. Someone came here today, Lord. They may have lost their job, may be having difficulties, Lord, with their career, Father. But you're a mighty God, and we know that increase comes from you. Lord, there's someone that was struggling with their mind this morning, Lord. Things that are beating them up, Lord, and they're having troubles, Lord, comprehending something that's going on in their life, Father, Lord. But you are a mighty God, Father. And we know that as we make your name big, Lord, that everything else, Lord, that we're dealing in our lives becomes small, Lord. When we lift up your name and make it big, Father, Lord, sickness becomes small, Lord. Difficulties become small. Enemies become small, Father, Lord, because you are big, Lord, and you are great, God. You are mighty, God, and you are God that is at work in our lives, Father. Lord, I just pray for the faithful people of God that are here today, Lord. They've come here to the altar with different things on their minds, Lord, on their hearts, Father, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you hear their hearts, Lord, hear their cry, Lord, see their difficulty, Lord, and come into them, come into the situation in your mighty way. Come into the situation and heal. Come into the situation and change, Lord. Send the right people into their lives, Lord. Open the right relationships. Open the right doors, Lord. Send healing their way, Lord, and come in in your mighty way. We just thank you, Lord, that we have you, Father, Lord. Because when we know when we have you, we don't have to worry, Father. We don't have to worry about a thing, Lord. We can have joy, Lord. Unspeakable joy, Father, Lord. Joy that only comes from having a peace, knowing that we serve a powerful Father, Lord, and a mighty Father, Lord, mighty Father, Lord, that is working and at work right now, Lord. We pray and believe for these things, Lord. I pray and believe for miracles to come and rain down on your faithful people that are here today, Lord from heaven lord open up your gates father lord open up the windows of heaven father and rain down your blessings answer prayers and be with us on this day we pray all these things in your precious name let all the faithful people of god shout amen 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 come on give god praise all around the sanctuary one more time amen 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 let's watch our ministry announcement Tuesday noon live and online Bible study is back. 
Join Pastor Larry starting March 5th for a new Bible study series on The Best is Yet to Come. This special session is going to teach about how to find a place of safety, stability, and trust in a world gone crazy. Don't miss this series. It's going to be life-changing. The month of March is Holy Month at Mount Zion. We want everyone to participate in four things. First, join our fasting and prayer challenge. Choose something to give up so you can draw closer to God. Then join us on Palm Sunday, March 24th. We are having Good Friday on March 29th at 12 p.m. with noon prayer at a Seven Last Words gathering of worship. For one hour, join us in the sanctuary for an interactive experience commemorating the seven last words of Jesus on the cross. And then our Resurrection Easter services on March 31st. We have a special day planned for our children's church. Invite your families so they can watch the kids on screen with Easter speeches. Then, after services, families can go across the street to Oakwood Park for the annual community Easter egg drop from an amazing helicopter swooping down, dropping Easter eggs with candy and even some with money. So it's going to be a day to remember. Will you commit to generosity this Easter? Each year, we are working to maintain our building with upgrades, do maintenance to our prayer park and parking lot, support our outreach ministries like human trafficking, victims assistance, city mission, and Love Inc. as we support families struggling financially. All of this along with our food pantry is a part of our Hope in the Village ministry. Last year we started our gym project for youth and children who have been using our Dream Center this past winter for youth basketball and mentoring. So on Easter Sunday, we are asking all that are willing to bring hope by giving at least $50, $100, $250, or $500 above and beyond your regular giving. If you will participate in giving hope when you give this special offering, write hope on your envelope. Thank you for being faithful to the cause. Our Connect Group ministry is ready for you. This ministry is for those that like to connect socially with like-minded people. If you are interested in the following Connect opportunities, head to the Connect desk after services. In April, there is a bowling outing being planned. This month, there is a foodie group for those who love great restaurants, a travel group where you can explore together, and we even have a group for those who want to take dance lessons. Lastly, the summer is coming and if you golf or want to head out on the green, sign up. The groups only happen if you register and participate. So if you're interested, sign up at the Connect desk or call the church. Hey everyone, it's Pastor Larry Macon Jr. and I'm just so delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you today. You know, as a leader, entrepreneur, and spiritual influencer, I'm passionate about helping others to reach their financial goals. I believe that financial freedom is within reach for everyone, and I'm here to help you make it a reality, but it starts with you. At our upcoming Freedom Conference Sunday on April 14th, we want to share with you some tips and also some strategies for successful budgeting, saving for the future, credit repair, and creating an alternate source of income. I hope on this special day that you'll leave with a clear plan of action that you can use to make your dreams a reality. I want to tell you on this special day at both services, we'll have partners and vendors around to assist you. And then after our 11 a.m. service, we'll have a business brunch for you to network and receive further resources to help you on your journey in the areas of financial freedom, business, and also entrepreneurship. Also, after the brunch, we will have some workshops available with some experts so you get answers to what you're looking for right away. If you want to join in this movement and be with us, let us know that you're attending. And if you want to be in one of our 30 to 45 minute master classes on that day, we want you to be there. Let us know. Go to the Connect Desk in the foyer or go online and just sign up or at mzov.org. There are four goals that I want everyone in our church to work toward these next few years. Number one, I want you to remember we want everybody in this place to own some form of tangible property, a home, or some piece of property in our country. We believe that ownership is what we need. Also, we want everyone to have a budget. Know what type of money that you bring in and how much you take out and plan your expenses so that you can make better decisions with your spending, which can also help you prepare 
for the future. Thirdly, this leads me to that third thing that I want everybody to remember. I want everyone to open or begin or to fund a savings account for your future or also for maybe your retirement, we call it. I call it for your financial freedom days of life and also for your future generations. Number four, we want everyone to work on an alternative source of income. If you got a job, then start a business on the side or a side job, get you a side hustle, we call it, or something to supplement your income. At the Freedom Conference, our Freedom in Life Sunday, we aim to help people learn how to take control of their life and take control of their finances. Together, we can make financial freedom a reality. I'm praying for you. I'm believing for you. And we want to anoint you in this realm of finance and business. So join with us. This is not a yearly uh, moment. Remember, this is an ongoing movement of God here at Mount Zion Oakwood Village. And we're celebrating 10 years. Can you believe it? It's been 10 years since our first Freedom Conference and our first Freedom in Life movement. So this is so great. And we're, we're happy again to have you there. So be there April 14th. Put on your calendar. I want to see you there. Take care and God bless you. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we prepare ourselves for the giving time. This is our time to give up the tithe today to bless God for blessing us. Are there any blessed people in the house? Just say amen. Amen. If God has blessed you and blessed your life, we're going to read this again responsibly. And even to those that are watching online, you can follow along with us, Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And you can give on the Givelify app or go to mzov.org or text to give, which you'll see on the screen in a moment. Thank you for tuning in. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done and all that he's given us. As we read in the text, it said he will rebuke the devourer, whatever it is that may be set up against us. The great thing is he can stop it. He'll do it for us. He'll do something special in your life if you're in covenant and in obedience with the Lord. As we give today, don't give grudgingly, give cheerfully, knowing that again, as the Bible says, he'll rebuke the devourer, but he'll even go a second step. The Bible says that he'll give you more. The Bible says that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out so many blessings that you can't receive it all. I don't know about you, but I could take a blessing like that where you can't receive it all because he'll bless you so much where you'll have to reject all that God would give to you. That's what the tithe will do in your life. So we don't give knowing that nothing's going to happen. We give knowing in faith that God will do what he said he will do. When we bless God's house, we know today and believe that God will bless our house. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up. Father, I thank you for faithful givers. I pray right now that you would touch their life today. Help them to know that you will never leave them and never forsake them. We give to you, God, again, not grudgingly, but we give to you cheerfully. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and an offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets, and you can give it this moment. It's giving time in God's house. The song says, I'm walking in increase.
Let us all stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise before you're seated. Give our choir a great big hand plays one more time. The best choir in the land. Amen for blessing us on this Sunday morning. How's everybody doing this morning? You doing all right? Are you blessed? All right, all right. If you got a Bible with you, say amen. The Bible. Go to Joshua chapter, excuse me, Joshua chapter 1 in the Old Testament. If you got your Bible with you, let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Verse 7 through 9, and I'm going to go into the New International Version of the text, but Joshua chapter 1, 7 through 9. If you could follow along with me, and even if you have your smartphone, why don't you move it over to Joshua chapter 1, 7 through 9. Something special happens when you read the Word of God. Something special happens when you go into God's Word and when you hear and when you experience it through the text. Let us bow our heads before we go into it. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up today. Father, today, we need to hear a word from you. Bread of heaven, feed us in this place. Feed us until we want for no more. God, we thank you again for everyone's here. We pray for healing and deliverance in this place. We pray, God, for peace. We pray for God. We pray for your love. We pray also for your understanding. Somebody in this place came here looking for clarity in their situation. I pray that they will receive clarity. Somebody in this place came with a, a heavy heart of sorrow, maybe over a loss. I pray right now that you will make up for the loss. Bring it into their spirit that they are never lost when they have you in their lives. God, touch us, Father, through your word. Hide me behind your cross as I preach your word. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen and amen. The Bible says this, and if you can just repeat this phrase behind me, this one phrase, say, be strong and very courageous. Say it one more time. Say, be strong and very courageous. The Bible goes on to say, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. The Bible says in verse 8, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Number 9 says, verse 9, it says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Repeat that last phrase with me. I think you need to say it. Say, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now you see it in the first person. Say, wherever I go. Today I just want to take a quick moment to preach and teach from the subject of Getting from here to there. How to get from here to there. You know, the truth of the matter is, no matter what you're going through, as Joshua mentioned in this text, I want to give you a good declaration. God is with you. But one fact about the truth of, the ma of, of this is, is that sometimes you can't always feel that God is there. Sometimes we don't always feel that he's there. If I can be honest this morning, where, uh, where you are today is because of what happened on yesterday, truthfully, and where you're going depends on what happens today. But where is God when it comes to that journey? Where and what are we to do while we're on this journey called life? 
And I think Joshua helps us along the journey through his words in the text if, uh, where he's given us the battle cry. He's given us this battle cry where he's saying, be strong and courageous. Yes, God is doing this. He's given the clarion call on what to do when you're going on the journey from here to where you are going. Good medicine for whether you are in the midst of a storm or where you're, whether you're going in a storm or coming out of a storm. The call for us as the people of God is to be strong and courageous. You know, the truth is, I encountered that this week. If you watch the State of the Union address of the president, no matter where your politics lie, no matter where your mind is going or where you're headed in, 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 where you're headed in your politics, I want to tell you, we're going into a rough season in this country. It's an election year. And so the stakes are high, and what happens next depends on what happens this year. And so if any of you saw it, the president gave this address to the nation and at a time when many people are questioning his resolve and his wherewithal, his energy level, and most importantly, people are questioning his age. So the question is, can he move forward? Can he move the country forward? Can he sustain, if you will? Or, or should we go back to the man that we had four years ago? And, and so the president, he, he had to look into the camera and he had to prove to us the American people, that he was strong and courageous. Well, I'm not going to lie. He showed me something. I didn't think that he had it in his tank. He was going stronger at 81 than I've ever seen somebody go. I, I said to myself, whatever he had for breakfast, I want some too. <laughs> and I say this all to say that sometimes in life you're going to be challenged with a moment that is going to cause you to have to be strong and courageous. And maybe, just maybe, that's not a bad thing to be challenged in your life. See, God does not allow challenges in our direction uh, to make us bitter, but he, he allows challenges to make you better. Stand up. Uh, he wants you to stand up like President Joe Biden did to make a stronger and better plea. There's got to be at least one or two people here today that can attest to the fact that your trouble made you stronger. There's got to be somebody in this, fact, uh, in this place that what you went through brought you to where you are today. Truth is, trouble can make you wiser. Trouble can wake you up. Trouble can actually change you for the better. I believe in 2 Corinthians 4.17. 2 Corinthians 4.17, if you're a note taker, it says this. It says, for our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweigh them all. See, the basic tenet of this particular text is that God has a purpose behind every single challenge. God has a plan behind every setback in your life. There are reasons why you go through what you go through. I look back in my own life and I look back over my journey and I, I thank God for the challenges. I thank God for what I go through. I remember my struggles and, and what I had to go through. But now I can look back and say, wow, good thing I went through that back then. Because now I realize that, that if I hadn't gone through the path that I went, I wouldn't be standing here today. I wouldn't be where I am here today. I wouldn't have the blessings that I have today. See, life should not be about chance and, and luck. The Christian life is about the divinely ordered steps of God. The divinely ordered steps of God. The Bible says this, the, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. That's found in Psalms 37, 23. What does it mean? It means as a child of God, your steps are not supposed to be ordinary. Your steps are not just supposed to be regular. They are supposed to be in sync with your divine purpose. And see, and even if you can't figure out what's happening, even if you can't figure it out on today, you need to rest assured that God is ordering your steps. Isn't it good to know that God is ordering your steps? Isn't it good to know? And, and see, that's how you can get from here to there much easier. Think about it. Perhaps the problem you just encountered was to teach you a little bit of patience. Perhaps the problem that you went through, maybe, just maybe, God has given you what you need for tomorrow. Maybe, just maybe, God is working through your trouble to develop your character. Maybe, just maybe, he's trying to make you a nicer person. 
Maybe just make you, maybe he's trying to make you a better person. Maybe he's just trying to change the way you do things. I, I remember this. Sometimes God needs to change you. You know, I remember I was counseling a young man a while back, and, and he was telling me how he had a crush on a young lady that he knew in his neighborhood, and, and he was telling me how he felt about her, and he said, I got to get to know this, this girl. So, so I told him, I, I said, well, what you got to do is, man, you got to ask her out. You got to ask her on a date. I said, you never know uh, if it's going to work out until you ask her out, until you meet her, until you spend some time with her. So he proceeded to tell her how even before uh, uh, he met her, he believed that she was the woman of his dreams. So I told him, I said, I said, well, do this. I said, send her some flowers. Can I get an amen, ladies? And then I said, invite her to your house for a home-cooked meal. And, and he said, good idea, Pastor. And he said, I'll do that. And, and so a few days later, I saw him, and, he, and, I, and I asked him the question. I said, how did the date go? How did it go with this new young lady? And, and he said, Pastor, he said, the whole thing was a complete disaster. He said, it was horrible, Bishop. He said, she was the worst woman that I ever met. So I said, what happened? I said, she didn't accept your invitation to come to dinner at your place? He said, no. He said, she came over for dinner. He said, but she refused to cook. You'll get it later on. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is still working on this young man. He's about to have a problem up in here. See, I say this all to say. That some folk need a little rejection in their life to realize that they're going in the wrong direction. See, the Bible teaches, the Bible teaches that basically God uses our storms, our challenges, and our problems for our benefit. To teach us valuable lessons. To teach us, number one, that it's time to draw closer to him. See, that's what Joshua text was showing us that, that, that earlier we read in the Joshua text. It says you want to be prosperous, you want to be successful, you want to make it in life, you want to get ahead in life. It says meditate on his word day and night. Stay focused on him. See, God wants you to stay close. Somebody say the word close. That's meant why he allowed the sickness. So you can also know that he is a healer. If you didn't experience the loss, how would you know that God could ever put it back together again? See, God is always working to bring you closer to him. Even if your situation feels like he's pushing you away, I want to tell you, God is drawing you closer to him. See, I used to look at, at things in my life for a while. Uh, I used to say, Lord, why are you pushing me away? Lord, why? Because this, this is angering me. This is frustrating me. And you know, you know what the Lord said back? He said this. He said, I'm not pushing you away. He said, I'm bringing you closer. Think about it. Some of the closest moments that we have with God are when we are in our darkest days. When our heart was broken or, or when we felt abandoned or, or when we were out of options or, or when the pain was great. Sometimes that's the only time that people will turn to God. It's when you're suffering that usually you pray the most authentic prayers and, and heartfelt prayers. Think about those times when you were hurting. That was the time that you were more focused on God. We actually learn things about God in our troubles, truth of the matter, that we have never known any other way. And yes, God could have kept us out of the troubles that we face. It's very evident that he has control over it. The Bible says, if you look in the Bible, look at some of the stories, God could have kept Daniel out of the lion's den. He could have kept Jeremiah from being tossed in a slimy pit. He could have stopped Paul from being shipwrecked, shipwrecked three times. And he could have kept the three Hebrew boys from being placed in the fire. But the Bible says he did not. He allowed them in the fire where they would have to be strong and courageous, in which they would then experience the Isaiah 43.2 factor. If you look in the Bible in Isaiah 43.2, this says this. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It says, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. 
It says when you walk through the fire, somebody ought to be a witness. You will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. See, that's how you develop a deep relationship with the Lord. That's how you get from here to there, being strong and courageous in knowing that God wasn't pushing you away through your situation. He was drawing you closer to him. So don't let your problems make you bitter. Somebody needs to make your problems make you better. It needs to, it needs to make you, let your problem make you, a, let me put it this way, a, a better Christian. Let it make you a better prayer. Make it, let it make you a better worshiper. Let it make you a better wife, a better husband, a better family member, a, a better follower of God. Yes, let it draw you closer to him. Because when you draw near to God, the Bible says what? He'll draw near unto you. Now, what does that mean? That means like the president, when, when everyone thought that you were too old to do it or you were too tired to make it through, you will receive what God can give. You'll receive the power that you need to move forward. Now, I don't know if there's anybody in this place, but you can receive the power of God. Aren't you glad that God can give you power? Power to overcome. Power to succeed. Power to survive. Power to achieve peace. Power to walk in the blessing that God has available to you. Power to walk in grace. Power to walk in mercy. Power to walk in confidence. Power to know when there's no other friend in your life, you got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. A friend that gives strength to the weary and gives a second win to the weak. Is there anybody in this place that can use the power of God? If you believe it today, give God some praise if you believe in the power of God. The power of God. Think about this. We don't have to live our lives irritated. You don't have to live your life uncomfortable. See, there's no better comfort level than comfort that comes in having a real relationship with Jesus Christ. So don't let your, your, your problems get you down. Let them bring you closer to God. Because God, with God, one of my statements is you can walk through life no matter what's happening and you can say these three words. You can say, it's all good. Come on, somebody say it with me. Say, it's all good. The good news this morning is that it's all good. Snow outside. It's cold outside. Because somebody say, it's all good. The time went forward on me. I'm a little tired. But somebody ought to give God some praise and say, it's all good. Stand on your feet. I, I may be a little weary. I may be a little heavy laden. I may be a little down. My week wasn't that great. But can somebody say it's all good? I may have gone through some struggles. I, I may have been through some sickness. I, I may have been through some pain. I may have been through some separation. But can somebody say it with me? It's all good. Why can I be strong and courageous? Why can I stand up to the test? Because it's all good. If you are a Christian, if you're a follower of Christ, he intends to use your problems for your good. Even when the enemy and others wanted to use it to destroy your life. One of my favorite verses helps me in this as we close today. The Bible says this in Romans 28. It says, we know, repeat after me, say, we know that God causes everything Say all things to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Bow your heads with me right now. And it doesn't say this. It doesn't say that God causes everything to work out the way that you want to. No, it says this. It says we know not through wishful thinking or through optimism. No, we know based on our faith based on our belief in God, that he's in complete control over our lives. He's in complete, complete control over our world and over our destiny. And the, the premise is this, is that Jesus loves us. We know this. We know that God has a plan. We know that we may not understand it. We know that we may not get it all in this life, but, but we have a life beyond this earth. 
to look forward to when we have a relationship with the Lord where we have a guarantee of freedom from the things that bother us the most. And for that, we got something to look forward to. As we're meditating on his word, as our head is bowed, can somebody say, we know. The Bible says we know that God causes. Remember this as you're praying to God that when difficult times come, you have to remember there's a great designer behind everything. Your life is not a result of random chance or, or luck, if you will. As Christians, we don't believe in luck. We don't believe in chance. We aren't some toy to be played with. We believe in God causes. God has a master plan for us. History for us is based on his story. That's what this month is all about. It's based on his story. Somebody say his story. God is pulling the strings that we that so we must know this that that, that we make may may make make some mistakes but God never does so we can be as Joshua said strong and courageous so we know that God causes everything can somebody say everything remember God's plan for your life involves all that happens to you your mistakes your sins and your hurts, your illnesses, maybe your death, maybe your disasters, maybe what they did to you, maybe how they treated you, divorce, the disasters, even the death of a loved one, even the death of somebody that you thought that you couldn't make it through without. God is saying through this verse that even through all of that, God can bring some good out of it. If God can bring some good, out of all the mess that happened on Calvary and turn it into the most glorious event in history. He can surely bring good into your life. I want you to proclaim in your spirit as every head is bowed that it's all good. We know that God causes everything to work together. Everything that happens into your life works together in God's plan. They're not isolated events. They're dependent on each other. If this didn't happen, maybe that wouldn't happen. That's why sometimes you got to thank God for the closed doors and even thank God for the open doors. You got to thank him for the bad times and even for the good times. Thank God because at the end of the day, he has divinely engineered and custom fit a life for you. Thank God right now that it's all good. Thank God that he can take you from here to there. I pray right now, and I want to let you know today that God wants to save you. If there's somebody in this place that isn't saved, I want you to accept Christ into your life. I want to say right now, as every head is bowed, I want to ask you the question, if you're saved, I want you to just raise your hand high. If you're saved, if you're saved, if you ask Christ to come into your life and you're saved, I want you to raise your hand right now. I want you to put your hand down. I want to ask you a question. If you're here today and you don't know if you're saved or you haven't asked Jesus to save you or you don't know where you're going if you were to leave this life, I want you to raise your hand. I just want to pray with you. If you're here today, maybe you're uncertain about where you're going to go if this life was over. I want you to raise your hand if you're here today. If you're here today, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. Maybe if you weren't baptized, if you haven't been baptized, raise your hand. Maybe you're here today and you haven't been baptized. I want you to be honest with me and just raise your hand today. Now I want you to raise your hand if you have a special prayer request. If there's something going on in your life that you believe that you need God to intervene for your life, just raise your hand all across the building right now. I want you to keep that hand raised and just bow your heads right now. I want to say to you, if you haven't accepted Christ into your life, fill out that card in the pew. There's a card that should be in front of you or go to the connect desk. And we want to connect with you and show you the next steps. All you have to do is say a simple prayer. Even as I say it right now, and you can pray it. It just says, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the grave on the third day. Come into my heart and save me right now. I pray for you. Maybe you haven't been baptized. You need to be baptized. I'd like for you to participate in our baptism service. Just fill out that card and let us know, and we'll bring you in and have you baptized on this month. And if you need special prayer, Heavenly Father, we're praying right now for hands raised right now. Help them to know. Help them to fill in their spirit as they leave, this do as they leave the doors today that it's all good. 
Help them to feel the melodies from heaven raining down on them. Help them to feel your healing power raining down on them right now by the sound of my voice. Bless them, God. Help them to get clarity. Help them to gain understanding. And help them to feel that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Bless their life even on today. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We love you. We magnify you. And we claim it today that it's all good. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today and consider yourselves dismissed. We'll see you on next week. Melodies from heaven, rain down on me. Mel